Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Tech. In this week's episode, we explore the early days of the Palm Pilot through the eyes of a Mac user. But before we do that, why don't we take a walk down memory lane and see how the Palm Pilot came to be. In the late 80s to early 90s, there were several companies that were trying to break into the new market of handheld computing. Tandy introduced the Model 100, followed by the Model 102. It was a great success and even a favorite amongst journalists, but it still had a lot left to be desired, especially being the size of a notebook. HP introduced the LC series, which was essentially a scaled down monochrome laptop, but it just wasn't met with market success. Apple introduced their product to market after spending a billion dollars on development and marketing. The Apple Newton message pad, guess what? It was also a flop, and its handwriting recognition was so bad that users resorted to using an external keyboard with it. In 1992, Jeff Hawkins formed Palm Computing, and he teamed up with Tandy and Casio to create the Zoomer, which was another handheld computer that just tried to do a little too much and was also a flop. Jeff didn't stop there though. He was hooked on handheld computing and kept developing this product over time until in 1995, he knew he had something. The problem was that he didn't have enough capital to get this device to market. Enter US Robotics, which ended up purchasing Palm Computing as a wholly owned subsidiary. They shortly thereafter launched the Palm 1000 the 5000, and then the Palm Pilot, which we'll be talking about today. These devices were overnight successes, selling over a million units within the first 18 months. It was a great option for PC users, but let's take a look at the Mac side of things. As usual, it wasn't very well supported, and what I have here is a Pilot Mac connection kit. We're gonna to attempt to use this to connect this Palm Pilot Pro to a Mac SE30. The requirements on this show that it needs a 68040 processor, but this Mac SE30, as a lot of you guys know, doesn't have that. It's a 68030. Let's see if we can get it to work. Okay, now that we've taken a walk down memory lane, let's actually figure out if we can get this to work with the Mac. So we have an SE30, which again is a 68030 processor, but this particular model, I am running a 32-bit clean ROM, so we can actually bump up the memory. This one is bumped up to 64 meg. We're running system software 7.5. And because of this ROM, we don't need to run uh, mode 32 on this. So that's if you have a dirty ROM, you can run mode 32. But we're running a GG Labs uh, ROM so that it's clean. Then we're going to take our serial port uh, docking station. We're gonna connect that using the supplied ADB adapter, and we're going to install this software. After connecting the Hutsync Cradle to the modem port, I docked the Palm Pilot just to get started. Also, I grabbed all of the discs, uh, there's four of them, 
and we're going to get started with the install by tossing in this first disc and hopefully with any luck these discs will actually still work after close to 30 years. So we're just going to stick with the easy install for this. Uh, it's going to create a folder for us and hopefully it will install. So what this balloon message is telling us is that we need to quit some other programs. So we're going to click continue to allow those programs to quit. And the install uh, seems to be going forward. At the end of this video, uh, if you want to fast forward, I'm actually going to show you a pretty neat hack for the uh, Palm Pilot Pro. If you get your hands on a Palm 3, you can actually take that sucker apart and grab the chip out of it and instantly perform an upgrade on the Palm Pilot Pro. So far, so good. It's reading the disks. And throughout this install process, I'll speed everything up as well so we don't have to sit here. Um, although for me, the sounds of a super drive reading a disk is almost like ASMR. Um, but I'm pretty sure that that's not the case for most of you. Okay, it's done with disk one, so we're going to move on to disk two. And it does look like we could use uh, some lubrication on that super drive, so maybe that'll be the, one of the next projects that we do with this Mac SE30. Although I do have a floppy MU that I want to put together and try out. If you've never used the GG Labs 32-bit uh, clean uh, ROM, one of the cool things about that is that it actually has a basic system image on it, so you can boot from that ROM and not from a floppy or a hard drive. And again, so far so good, we're not getting any uh, error messages relating to this being incompatible. What I am guessing is that looking at the back on the system requirements, if we can get this into focus, is that this requires 640 by 480 on a 13 inch monitor. Uh, and I don't think that that display is going to work. So we'll see. This Macintosh SE30 is using the SCSI to SD adapter. Uh, I do have some spinning disks that are still working, but I chose to go with this just for uh, the ability to have much more storage space and I'm actually also running uh, multiple operating systems. If you have one of these old SE30s, another neat utility is the set date program because these didn't natively support going uh, into the year 2021. But with that set date program, you can actually use uh, all current dates. Okay, we're, we're looking for disk number three now. The goal of doing this is to see if we can get the Palm Pilot and Palm connection software 
to work on one of these older Macs because not everybody back in the day had the latest and greatest Macintosh. I know when I was growing up, I didn't have the latest PC or the latest Mac. I was always several years behind. And as a result, I was always tinkering around trying to get software to work properly um, on an older machine. So this will be a cool adventure for all of us. All right, excellent. We're on to the last disc at this point. Fingers crossed, it'll read disc number four just as easily as the first three discs for us. Okay, it looks like our installation should be wrapping up shortly. So that went well. Oh, we want disc number one again. Okay, we did mention at the beginning of this setup that we did choose to put this to the modem port and I can see that it's asking us where it's installed. Okay, I don't have Apple Talk turned off, uh, turned on rather, so this, this should be all set. We'll just need to do a restart. Okay, and it looks like it read all of our disks, and this install finished without any errors, so that's a good, good sign. This is pretty promising. We're just restarting now to make sure that that system extension loads for hot sync monitor. Now on this particular SE30, I chose to go with 64 megs of RAM versus really loading it up with 128 just because I didn't want the system load time to be really long. Um, I've heard from a lot of folks online that when you max out the memory that it does take a significant time to load. So with uh, 64 megs, I think that that was a happy medium. Okay, with our system booted up, let's see if we do have hot sync in here. We do. Okay, we're running hot sync monitor at startup. The port monitoring is on, so that's good. We have it uh, set to local. We have it using our modem port, which is great. I went ahead and copied over a program that I think will work, which is Kyle's Quest. Okay, so let's see here. We have the pilot tutorial. Let's see if this even works. And I'm guessing that it won't due to the, just due to the screen resolution.
And right off the bat, you can you can totally see that this was not intended to be run on this SE30 at all. But sure enough, it is running. Slowly, but it's running. Okay, and as as you can see that this uh, this totally isn't designed for this Mac at all. Um, you can barely make out any of the uh, the wording here. I'm guessing that this is exit. Okay, so the pilot tutorial, uh, not the most important thing to work. Uh, let's see if pilot desktop launches. Okay, we have a splash screen, 1996, the same year that this hat was from. Okay, this is excellent. So the program actually loaded, uh, but again, we have some issues with screen real estate here that the resolution just isn't enough to display the whole application. The date book looks a little bit better, but again, we can see that some of this is cut off of the screen. So I'm guessing that most of the data entry is going to have to occur on the side of the Palm Pilot. So let's just put one in here. Um, we're just gonna name it test. We'll see, it's due at the end of the week. I'm filed. We'll call this one test two. So it's a number two priority. Um, we'll file this one as personal. And we'll see if we can add a test note. We cannot add a, a test note. Oh, here we go. All right. So we, if we double click on that, we get the note editor. Okay. All right, so that overwrote. The last note, which kind of stinks. Um, Yeah, so it looks like we're going, if, if we're going to be making uh, to-do lists, we would have to add them on the Palm Pilot itself. But it does work. So that's a bonus that it launched. 
And the most important thing for me, honestly, would be able to ba be the ability to back everything up, but also to install apps. So let's use this install app program. That's the main thing. Can we use HutSync and can we install applications? Because I just want to keep a backup on my Macintosh. I don't necessarily need to do the data entry on the Mac side. So we're going to go to the desktop and switch to all files. And I have Kyle's Quest here. And we're also going to need the database file as well. Okay, all right, so we selected those two files. Now here's the big moment. If we turn on our Palm Pilot, let's see if the backlight helps out any. And we hit the hot sync button. Is it going to work? That's a good sound if you know Palm Pilots. So it says that it's identifying the user. We have a watch icon that came up on the Mac. The hot stink, <laughs> the hot, the hot sync application loaded and it's asking us to select a user, which we will choose the my random 603 user that we created. And while this isn't a perfect solution, if you had an older Mac back in the day, I think that I would be pretty happy with being able to do at least this. Uh, grabbing some applications, maybe a shareware CD that had Palm apps on it, being able to copy those and install them on my Palm Pilot, I, I would be happy with that. Being able to edit addresses and to-do lists on, directly on the Palm, and then at least being able to back them up to my Mac, again, I would be satisfied with that until I could upgrade. So everything looks like it's chugging along here. Hutsync complete. And we didn't get any error messages. The big question is, if we grab this Palm Pilot and this stylus, and we go over to Applications, oh, we have Quest. And sure enough, we, are, we were able to put Kyle's Quest on this Palm Pilot Pro from US Robotics. I'd call that a success in my book. So I promised you guys a little bonus at the end of this video, and that is how could you upgrade this? Because if you were familiar with this device at all, and you looked at the preferences, or the memory rather, you would see that this does not have much memory whatsoever. Okay, so what do we do? First, we're gonna shut this off. We're gonna pop this open, and we're gonna remove this. And what I did ahead of time is I actually ordered another one, a Palm 3, that was as is, not working. So this one, although it looks great, it looks like it had uh, some trouble in the battery compartment, so it doesn't power on. So all you have to do is remove these four screws, which I'll show in a minute, and we're gonna remove a similar looking card as this, and we're gonna instantly upgrade that Palm Pro to a Palm 3. 
Okay, I've gone ahead and grabbed the Palm Pilot that we were just using. We're taking out that, that uh, board. We're going to set it aside and we're going to take the board that we just removed out of the Palm 3. We're going to put it in there and we're going to hit the reset button. And you can see it's instantly recognized as a Palm 3. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll uh, go ahead and center the digitizer, calibrate everything, and let's see if this will actually sync. Okay, with the digitizer all calibrated, uh, you can see the applications are here. Uh, Kyle's Quest isn't isn't loaded anymore, neither is Giraffe. But let's go ahead and see uh, what we can do with Hot Sync on here. And I believe if we hit the menu and info, we can see that we have much more free memory now. Also, if you go to, I believe it is the to-do list and hit the menu, options, and then about, you can see this is Palm 3, 3.0 software, where before you had the 2.0 software loaded. All right, without further ado, let's go back to our main menu. We're going to dock this. Let's go back to our install app. Again, we're just gonna see if we can get Kyle's Quest to install to prove that this actually works. We have to grab that database file as well. All right, and here is for the uh, moment of truth. We're going to hit the hot sync button. That's a promising sound. It should ask us for the username one more time because this thinks it's a brand new device. And if you guys enjoyed all the effort I went through, uh, even getting some props for this episode, go ahead and give me a thumbs up below. If you didn't like this, give me a thumbs down and I'll try to do a better job next time. I know that this content isn't for everybody, but if you're remotely interested in retro technology, early Macintoshes, or even Palm Pilots, I hope that you enjoyed this one. It looks like the hot sink operation is wrapping up. And with any luck, we should have Kyle's Quest installed on this Palm Pilot Pro that thinks it's a Palm 3. There were no errors. It looks like it completed without issue. And same thing, let's see what we have here. Oh, we have the icon. And we have Kyle's Quest on here. 
That's it, folks. Thanks for watching another episode of Retro Tech, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.